9 times m squared minus 25 times m times n minus 6n squared. We want to factor that, right? So what we do is we say, all right, so here we have two trinomials. Now, what times what gives you 9? What times what gives you 9? First thing that pops in my mind is 3 times 3. You don't really know what the answer is going to be, so you have to start somewhere. So this will be 3m, and this will be 3m. And then you look and say, all right, well, I have 6. What times what gives me 6? First thing I think of is 2 times 3 is 6. So this will be 2n, don't forget the n, times 3n. And the reason there's an n is because you have n squared there. So then before I try to put any plus or minuses anywhere, don't waste your time with that. Just look at the interior terms. Forget about the letters. Look at this. This is going to give me 6. 2 times 3 is 6. This is going to give me 9. Is there any way 6 and 9 can give me 25, even if I add them or subtract them? There's no way it's going to work. 6 and 9, that's going to be 15. So, and if I subtract them, it's even worse. So instead of scratching through it, I just kind of write a no off to the side. And instead of writing parentheses over and over and over again, what I do is I just come down below and kind of like try different numbers out. Because now you have a problem. You see, you have 9, which means 3 times 3 works, but also 1 times 9 works. And then you have 6, which means 1 times 6 works and 2 times 3 works. So there's a lot of combinations of all of these numbers to see what, when you can get 25 in the middle. So what I do as a shortcut is I come down here, as I say, and, and I don't even write the parentheses. I put a 3 here and a 3 here. And previously I tried 2 and 3, so I'm going to flip it around and just put a 3 here and a 2 here. And I'm just doing that because I know that these are going to give me this and these are going to give me this. What I'm checking for is the inside plus the outside terms. What do I get? Can I get 25? And then I'll finish the problem. This will give me 9. 3 times 3 is 9. This will give me 6. 9 and 6, there's no way that's going to work. Not going to give me 25. So I put no. All right? Now, what do I do next? I mean, there's a lot of different choices I can do next. Let me go ahead and try 3 and 3 again. And what else can give me 6? It can be 6 times 1. So I can put a 6 here and a, a 1 over here. And then I look and, and see here. 6 times 3 is 18, so that's getting closer. Here's 3. 18 plus 3 still doesn't give me anywhere close to 25, even if I add or subtract them. And I could just be thorough if I wanted. I could go here. I could do this. I could flip it around 1 and 6. But you see, it's not going to make any difference because this is going to give me a 3. This is going to give me 18. It still doesn't give me 25. I don't have any more choices. 3 times 3 is not the right choice to give me the 9 because I've already exhausted all possibilities for this and none of them work. So what else times what else gives me 9? Let me switch colors here. Well, 9 times 1 gives me 9, so I put a 9 here times 1 here. And then I'm going to go back to 6 and say what gives me 6. I'll do 2 times 3. And then I check and see I have this gives me 2 times 1 is 2. 9 times 3 is 27. So here's 27, here's 2. You try to add them or subtract them. If I subtract them, I actually get 25. So I think I may have stumbled upon the right answer. Now I'll put my parentheses back in place, and I'll write everything properly. 9m, and this will be 1m, and this is 2n, and this is 3n. I have to put the variables back in place. Now i got to arrive at my signs. I need a negative 6n squared, so one of these needs to be plus, and one of them needs to be minus, and I also want a negative on the inside. So I'm going to then put my negative here and positive here, and the reason I'm doing that is because this will give me positive 2mn. This will give me negative 27mn. So the negative 27 plus the 2 gives me negative 25. This is the right answer. 9m plus 2n, and then m minus 3n. Make sure you understand that. First terms multiply to give me this. Last terms multiply to give me this. Inside plus outside terms give me this. You just have to go through a little bit more trial and error. And of course, I didn't write it here. No, no, you know, this one was the one that worked. So then I go put my parentheses back in place. When I get into the complicated problems like this, this is kind of how I handle it because writing those parentheses over and over again gets kind of old. 2r squared minus 11rp plus 5p squared. So I always start out by at least trying to write my parentheses down. I have 6. What times what gives me 6? I'm going to just blindly guess 3r times 2r. 3 times 2 is 6. It's a fine place to start. And then I have a 5p squared. What times what gives me 5? I'll do 5p times 1p. And then I examine. All right, This will give me 10rp. This will give me 3rp. So 10 and 3. Can I add them or subtract them? Neither way that that I do that, I'm never going to get 11. 
So that's actually not right. So I know that I have a lot of choices here, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, not write the parentheses again. I'm going to put the 3 and the 2 here, and I'm just going to flip around the 5 and the 1 that I had here before. So I'll put a 1 here and a 5 here, and again I'll re-examine. These are going to give me 2. 2 times 1 is 2. This is going to give me 15, so 15 and 2. Even if I subtract them, I only get 13. It's not going to give me that, so that's not right either. So I have to go back to the drawing board. Apparently, 2 times 3 giving me 6 was not the right choice. So let's go and check something else out. What else times what else gives me 6? There's really only one thing. 6 times 1 is 6, and then I'll go back to 5 and 1. Make sure you understand that. 6 times 1 gives me the 6. 5 times 1 gives me the 5. And I examine the middle. 5 times 1 is 5. 6 times 1 is 6. Of course, you can add those and get 11. Remember, you always try to add or subtract them to see if you can get the middle number. That's a check on if it's possible. Then I get excited and I say, all right, I'm going to write my uh, parentheses down. This will be 6R. This will be 1R. So just put the R there. This will be 5P. And this will be... 1p, so just put the p there. And then I look at this and say, well, I'm looking for positive. So the only way that can happen is if I have a positive here and a positive there, but that's not going to work because that will not give me a negative inside answer. So the only way it works is if I have a negative here and negative there. Then when you multiply this times this, you get positive 5p squared. This multiplied gives me negative 5rp. This gives me negative 6rp. You add those, this is exactly what you get as the final answer. And that's that's how you handle these problems. You're just going to have to crank through the trial and error. There's really no other polite way to say it. It's just That's just the way it is. All right, now the next problem, we only have two more of these. The next problem is, uh, let's say we have 21c squared plus 4c minus 12. Now this one's going to be tricky because you have 21, right? So you have 1 times 21. Then you also have 7 times 3 is 21. And then for 12 is a nightmare because you have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. All give you 12. So you have lots of combinations, and you're trying to get this interior answer to be 4. So you just crank through the trial and error. First, always start out with the parentheses. Um, 7 times 3 is 21, so I'll put 7c times 3c. Um, and then I look at the 12. You're going to have to make an initial guess at that. 4 times 3 is 12, so I'm just going to put 4 and 3 to give me 12, and then I examine. The inside terms would give me 12. This will give me 7 times 3 is 21. Now even if I subtract 21 minus 12, it's never going to give me 4, so this isn't right. right. And then I can try to flip it around. I can say, well, I'll put the 7 back here and put the 3 back here, and then I'll flip around 4 and 3 to make it 3 and 4. All I did was really switch the order of these, and I try again. 3 times 3 is 9. 7 times 4 is 28, so even if I do 28 minus 9, you try to add or subtract, there's no way it's going to give me 4. So that's not the right answer. All right, so I've got more choices. All I've tried is uh, 3 times 4. That's all I've tried so far. So let's go ahead and put the 7 back here and the 3 back here. And what else times what else gives me 12? Well, 6 times 2 is 12. So I'll put a 6 here and a 2 here. 6 times 2 is 12. And then I check it out. This gives me 18, right? And this gives me 14. 7 times 2 is 14. So 18 minus 14 possibly does give me 4. So I get excited, and I think, all right, maybe I have the answer here. So you, you never know, but I think I'm close. So this will be 7C. This will be 3C. This will be 6, and this will be 2. Make sure you understand. 7 times 3 is 21C squared. 6 times 2 is 12. Now, I'm looking for negative 12. So 1 needs to be positive. 1 needs to be negative. And I'm looking for positive 4. And what that means is I want the sign. So this, this term is going to give me 14. This term is going to give me 18. So I want the positive sign to be here and the negative sign to be there. Make sure you understand why. Because 6 times 3 gives me positive 18. This times this gives me negative 14. And so when I add them, I'll get the positive 4. So this is the right answer. 7C plus 6 times 3C minus 2. And that's the final answer. All right. Now, what we have is one more problem to do before we close this topic out. What if we have uh, 32n squared minus 4n minus 15? 
Again, it's kind of a nightmare because 32 is such a big number. There's lots of things. You know, 8 times 4 is 32. 16 times 2 is 32. Um, you know, lots of, lots of different things you can multiply to give you 32. And then for 15, you have 3 times 5 is 15. You have 1 times 15 is 15 and so on. So you just have to crank through some, some guesses here. So we, we start with 32. What times what gives us 32? 8 times 4 is 32. So I'm going to write 8n times 4n. That gives us 32n squared when I multiply. And then what times what gives me 15? 3 times 5. I'm always going to remember it that way just from when I learned my multiplication tables. 3 times 5. And then I examine. 3 times 4 is 12. 8 times 5 is 40, right? So here's 40. Here's 12. Even if I subtract them, there's no way I get 4. So this is not right. So I go on and, and just write the numbers down because I think I'm going to be in for the long haul. The 8 times 4 I'm going to leave in place and I'm just going to flip the 5 and the 3 around. I'll put a 5 here and a 3 here and then I re-examine. 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 3 is 24. So there you go. 24 minus 20 would give me 4. So I get excited and I say, all right, I'm going to put my parentheses back in place. This will be 8 times n. This will be 4 times n. This will be 5. This will be 3, just copying the numbers down. And since this is negative, one of these needs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative, while at the same time giving me a negative inter interior answer. So since this gives me 20, this gives me 24, then I know that I want the negative sign to go here and the positive sign to go here because then these multiply to give me negative 24n. These multiply to give me positive 20n. When I add those together, I get the negative 4 I'm after. So that's the final answer. And of course, you double check yourself. 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 15 and so on. So it's 8n plus 5 times 4n minus 3. And that concludes the section. You should be fairly comfortable with learning and, and, and exercising the skill in factoring trinomials. Um, and it was a long process. We started out with easier problems and getting to more and more complicated problems. Now you've done so many of them that you should at least know the process. Solve all of these yourself and then go back and solve them all again. And eventually the recipe that I've been showing you gets a little bit easier with time. It's really just a lot of trial and error. It's really the only part of algebra I can think of right now that requires a lot of trial and error. And so make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson and we will conquer a new topic in Algebra 1. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.